Hey folks, Steve Lewis here. Welcome to Relevance for today. We got a special show for you just as we planned. We were hoping to get Mike Daigle here so he can share on his experience about trusting God as he waited for a kidney for six years. Stay tuned, folks. This is an amazing story. You're going to love it. Okay, so we're back. We've got Caleb with us today. Caleb, welcome. Hey, thank you, Steve. Yes, and we've got a special guest, Mike Daigle, also known as Mike D. How you doing, Mike? Good. How are you doing, Steve? I'm doing good, man. It's good to have you here. Yeah, it's good to be here. Good. So we've done a three-part series, Caleb and I. It was a good series, wasn't it, Caleb? Yeah, it was a good series. Yeah, yes. It was a great time. People are still enjoying it. They're like yeah. cracking it out today. Hey, that's all right. That's, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's good to know. So... In our part three of Trusting God, we talked about wanting to get together with Mike Daigle, which is Caleb's father, so he could share on his experiences as uh, he waited for a kidney for six years. So tell us how everything started, Mike. Uh, about six and a half years ago, I uh, found out that uh, when I went to work one day, I, I broke my finger. And uh, the next day, I went to the emergency room and then come to find out my blood pressure was 180 to 120. Wow. And then they told me to go to my family doctor. So I went to my family doctor, and then he sent me to the kidney doctor. And come to find out my kidneys were uh, 22% wow. function. Jeez. So from then on, I uh, had to uh, – I watched – I went to the kidney doctor, and then he said 22%. So I had to, you know, do stuff to watch what I ate and stuff so I could keep my uh, kidney functions at the 22%. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, cutting down, not eating, you know, like chips and junk and soda and stuff. And between doing all that, I lost like 35 pounds. Oh, and, wow. uh, yeah, I kept it for about maybe, you know, my functions were – staying the same for two years and i mean in those two years i you know uh relied on the lord and, and you know asked him to help me in the situations you know to heal my kidneys and trust in him right and you know i did a lot of praying and reading uh you know the bible and stuff and scriptures towards healing and stuff and uh you know just keep praying and believing god for for a miracle right uh and sometimes, you know, but after a while, I kept praying for my numbers to keep going up. And then the next thing you know, I, uh, my numbers kept going down and down. And I, I just felt like, you know, what's going on, God and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the next thing you know, after a while, the, the enemy just kept bringing negativity to me. And that's the worst thing to do is if you start letting the devil put the negative things in your mind, then the positive things just don't, you know, just don't seem possible anymore. Right. You know, so trusting, like today we're talking about trusting, you know, trusting in the Lord, you know, yeah, I trusted in the Lord, but it's just that it was just the negative things just started. Oh, well, why did this happen to me? You know, why are my numbers going down when I'm praying these scriptures, you know, mm -hmm. every night reading the word, uh, doing this stuff. It was just it was hard for me. Uh, and then the next thing you know, the day came that I had to go and the doctor said, you have to go on dialysis. Wow. And that was a hard part for me in that journey. I just didn't want to do that. And uh, it was hard. I mean, uh you know, trusting in God sometimes, you know, trusting him is we have to trust, trust. But sometimes, you know, it's it's when things go your way, it's just wrong. And you see things that are not when you're praying for things, it's not happening. It's just it's it gets to you. Right. And the next thing you know, I had to go on dialysis and stuff. And mm. uh, I went I was on dialysis for about uh, close to. Two and a half, year, almost three years. Oh, wow. Yeah, I did That's home something. dialysis. Mm -hmm. But in between doing home dialysis, I had to have, you know, I had hernias and stuff. And then I had to 
go and put a catheter in my chest to go do uh, dialysis at the dialysis center. And that was really rough. After my, you know, hernia would heal, then I'd go back to doing my home uh, dialysis. So all between all this dialysis stuff and hernia, it was it was a rough situation. Right. And <clears throat> and then after that, you know, about September, uh, I went to church one uh, Sunday, and the next thing you know, uh, a girl Marissa came up. Uh, and she had a story to say, and she was. Uh, she said that she had, you know, doing well, hold her. Hold up, hold up! Don't tell us that part yet. We're going <laughs> to save that for a little bit later on because we've got a long way to go. Because we definitely want to talk to you about some different things. Mm -hmm. But we're going to pause right now <laughs> for a quick commercial break. See you in a bit. This podcast today is brought to you by Storyboard Coffee. Hey, what are you drinking? It's a good old glass of Storyboard coffee. What's Storyboard? You've never heard of Storyboard? <laughs> yeah, I haven't. Can what? I have a cup? Yeah, sure. Oh, thanks, man. So, this looks amazing. My word. Where, where, where's this coffee come from? So, um, Ben Nason roasts it himself for Fairfield, Maine. Really? Um, to find out any more information, you can go to Storyboard dot com mm -hmm. s t o r i b o r d dot com nice mm, that's good coffee yes. yes storyboard coffee because you deserve more than just a hot drink okay folks so we are back we just had to have a little fun there with uh, ben nason he does do coffee locally and I told him I'd do a little free advertisement for him so we just threw that out there but you can really go online to storyboard Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. Awesome. And the spelling on that again, Caleb? It is S-T-O-R-I-B-O-R-D dot com. Good coffee, too, folks. Yes, amazing coffee. Very it delicious. Non-GMO. That's right, non-GMO. <laughs> no chemicals, no garbage. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're back with Mike. Mike was starting to tell, and I had to stop him a little bit because he was going far. He was running the streets. Real fast, so we want to go back a little bit. So, Mike, you shared with us that you found out you had uh, kidney disease. Yeah. So, how did you feel when they first told you that? Uh, when they told first told me, it's like it was a big shock. I'm like, oh man, you know what's what's gonna happen? Mm -hmm. And you know, I looked at this, my life, and it's like, well, well, I'll be able to do you know things that I always do, and and I heard things about that you know but it was just uh it was just i i can say that when i left the office the doctor's office i was crying and i called my wife and it was just tough for me it was really tough mm. to hear that that i had the kidney disease and so it was rough for a couple two weeks i didn't talk that much i was just you know keeping it in and stuff right so yeah so when did you tell the family when did you find out caleb I want to say that I found out probably around the same time mom did. Mm. Yeah, it was, I mean, I was, I was still in school, pretty sure. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was really tough to, cause like you don't really, you wouldn't expect it. You know what I mean? Right. It's like one of those things that comes out of the blue. And, um, I mean, if it wasn't for that doctor's appointment or dad breaking his finger, he would have never found out. So you right. never know how far I would have gotten to the point before he figured it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was a shock. I mean, at first, you know, it's kind of too hard to believe in a, not like a positive way, obviously, but right. just one of those things, you know, if, if you're not put in that position, you, you really, you really don't understand until it actually, you know, happens. And, um, you know, it's just, you have to, I thought to myself, you know, you have to be there and support and just keep pushing on and just keep believing that it's, the healing's going to happen. Right. Yeah. So that must've been hard for you, huh? Mike, to tell the family. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was tough. Uh, I mean, I didn't know what the boys would think and stuff and how they would take it. Right. Cause you know, 
sometimes, you know, you just hold it in and you don't say anything, you know, stuff, express stuff. Right. <clears throat> so, I mean, it's it's a tough situation. Like Caleb said, you know, he said, if I wouldn't have broke my finger, uh, then I would have never known. Right. You know? Yeah, but that's an- true. But another thing, too, is that I, uh, a week before, I had a dream. And in that dream, uh, I was being pecked by blackbirds. Wow. It's a serious story. Uh, and uh, I woke up. And then, so I went and talked to my sister. And I asked her, I said, what is blackbird? And, and she looked, was checking it out. She said, death. Wow. And then the next week, uh, that's when I broke my finger. And, and then boom. And then boom. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, and like I told somebody, I said, you know, I said, if I would have never broke my finger, I would have kept going and going and going and going. Mm-hmm. And I would have been, I, and my blood pressure would have just kept going high, high. Cause, and I could have been, you know, died. Right. Well, yeah, they would have treated you for high blood pressure instead of yeah. finding out. Thank God that doctor went the extra step and checked yeah. your blood yeah. and everything, huh? Yeah. So God, you know, sometimes works in mysterious ways. I mean, mm. So, but yeah, it was, it was tough. Yeah, that was a journey for sure. So you told the family. And then what was the next step? I mean, the next step, uh, I I mean, I told the church family to and to pray and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I just started, you know, doing those appointments and stuff every, yeah, it was every month. I had to go to a, a press call and just, you know, still work 40 hours and just keep doing what I was doing. I mean, but in... In the back of my head, it was still tough, you know, because I thought, oh, man, you know, one of these kidneys going to be go down and then I'm going to have to be on dialysis. That's the thing that I worried the most because I didn't want that. Right. And you were still working 40 hours a week? Yeah, 40 wow. hours a week. And 40 hours nonstop. That's something, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it helped me in the long run because, you know, just working and not thinking about it and stuff was... Right. Uh, help me through and then you know i told some you know friends and stuff and yeah that wasn't uh that definitely wasn't good news when you told me that yeah so i definitely prayed and uh did what i could for you guys you know that's all we can do is be supportive of people when we hear about stuff like that and and just keep it positive Mm. yeah it was you had to deal with that, didn't you? Yeah. People with, uh, I mean, tell us how to react. I mean, how are we supposed to behave? Because sometimes we just say the things that we think we're supposed to say, and we're really saying the wrong things, like coming up to you and saying something like, well, I had a, a relative who died of kidney disease or something, or you're going to be fine. You'll get over it. You'll be fine. You know, w- what would you say to that? Because I remember you got up in church one day and you gave a nice speech about what to do and what not to do when it comes to people going through things like what you had to go through? I mean, you know, a lot of times people just say things, uh, you know, oh, everything's going to be good and stuff. And and I know that they mean well and stuff, but it's sometimes we, when you're going through it, it's it's, it's harder. Mm. And I know that, you know, people are trying to encourage you and stuff and to make it feel, you know, better and stuff. And sometimes, I don't know, it, it's good. It's good, you know, mm. but a lot of times it's just like, you know, it's it's hard to take because mm. what you're going through, they don't they don't experience it. Yeah, they don't experience yeah. it. You it's, know, it's like it's like basically anything in life, really. Like if you're going through anything tough, or people may may think that they know or understand, but until they're actually put in that situation, until they're put into that situation, that's when they'll actually realize like. How hard it can be sometimes. Mm, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's not easy. You had some rough days in there. Some days you were up, and some days you just, which was only natural. You had some down days. Yeah, I mean, when I went to on in di- uh, when I had to do dialysis, it was uh, yeah, I had a lot of down days. Mm. I mean, some days I, I don't know. You know, I was snappy sometimes. I mean, just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Mike was snappy. 
I know. It's just that. I mean, I wasn't like feeling good, and mm. I just my mind was just like a lot of times that dialysis can take a lot out of you and stuff, and especially when I first started it, I did it at home, uh, so it was easier on my body. You know, it wasn't taking my blood out, so but still, it was still taking the toxins out, and it was just sometimes I'd just be irritated, and I just didn't want to. Mm. being near anybody just be by myself and stuff right <clears throat> what's your so. advice for people who are going through that situation like that i mean just that portion of your life when you started doing the dialysis and stuff i mean if you know people are going to dialysis uh <clears throat> i mean tell them you know i would tell them that you know if somebody's out there trying to you know talk to you and help you uh you know just uh you don't have to say anything, just listen, mm -hmm. because sometimes, you know, listening is, uh, and then the other, you know, verse, verse versa, versa, you know, the other person that is wanting to help, if, if you're the, the guy and the person on dialysis, if they're talking to you just to listen to them, because right. sometimes they just want to vent out mm -hmm. on different things, not against that you, but against, you know, just to vent all that stuff out that's in them, because... Right. A lot of times, but I mean, I can tell people that are in dialysis to, you know, it's hard, mm. but really, you know, don't give up. Right. I mean, uh, there's a lot out there that, you know, can help you and stuff. And, you know, if you're having a rough time to, there's social workers to help you and stuff. But if you know the Lord, you know, you got to. Amen. Go to him, and mm -hmm. he can help you through a lot. Right. So, yeah, and you, uh, you want to give them some advice about following the doctor's instructions about what to eat. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, you, if if you're on dialysis, you know, you gotta follow the uh, instruction of the doctors and the physician, uh, the dietitian, and stuff. Because if you, you know go against that you know you got to watch your uh, phosphorus intakes and you got different things that you have to watch when you eat your salt intake and stuff uh i mean you got to keep your phosphorus level in in the low you know around eight or nine mm. you can't go crazy on that because if you are really on the if you're going to get on the transplant list if you go over eight uh then you you're going to be off the transplant list, right? Because your phosphorus intake is too high. And the reason why they do that is because they want people who are serious about wanting to stay alive, yeah, to get a kidney versus someone who says, "Well, I'm going to eat whatever I want because I'm going to be waiting on a kidney coming soon." Yeah, and plus, plus when you get a transplant, you're on so many medications mm. that they want you to be strict and watching what you do. Because they want you to be strict on taking all the like, anti-rejections and not miss a day. So, mm. but yeah, so. No, that's good, man. It's good to see you sitting here today because it's been six years. How many years has it been? Well, it's been six and a half when I found out. Wow. So. It's been yeah. almost a year since you got your transplant, though. Ooh. October. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. the transplant portion. Yeah. Go ahead and tell us what. So, so you were on the list. I was on the list, and mm -hmm. for a while, um, when I first put my uh, on the list, uh, I think it was I put on. Uh, my word, I, I don't know the date, but I know that I had a phone call one uh, day on uh, on December twenty third, mm -hmm. and they said that they had a kidney for me, and that. Uh, it was a kidney. It was a kidney. That person uh, died in the rehab. Mm. Uh, it was about eight weeks. He was in the rehab. Mm -hmm. And they said they had a kidney. And they said that. I said, well, why was he in rehab? And uh, they said that he was a IV user. And uh, come to find out. So I asked questions. I said, hey. I said, well, what was he you doing? You know, what kind of drugs and stuff? Right. And they didn't know anything. Oh, wow. So I said, well, give me your number. I'll call you back. So, you know, I mean, I, I called my wife cause, and talked to her about it, too. And she said, well, 
I wasn't on dialysis then. And so she said, well, we should just wait. So then I called the lady. And uh, mm. when I told her that, she goes, uh, yeah, you made a good choice. Isn't that something? Now, why didn't they tell you that the first time? <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. And uh, when and next when uh, next month when I went to see the transplant team, I told the doctor, he says, yeah, I says, you did a, the right thing. Right. Because that could have shortened your life. Yeah, yeah I mean, more. you never know what, uh, you know. Right. So. So then you got on dial- dialysis and you got on the list. And then when did you get the good news? Uh, I got the good news. Uh, it was. About a year ago? Yeah, about a year ago. I I went to church one Sunday and. Uh, yeah. And uh, the next thing you know, we were sitting down and then. Uh, Pastor Claude said, hey, uh, Marissa wants to say something. So she went up there and she started talking about, you know, God doing things in her life and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, so she started talking a little bit. And then so I thought, well, maybe she's, you know, up there talking about, you know, her schooling, how she passed it and physical therapy and stuff. And right. and then that God had... Uh, Giving her a good, a real good job, and uh, <laughs> so the next, you know, she asked her. Uh, she was talking about uh, a thing about Joe Osteen that she listened to and stuff, and and then after everything she had said, uh, she invited her parents up, and then I were watching her parents, and they had a, like a present in there. So I looked at my wife, and I'm like, we didn't know what it was, and so, right? So. Who's her parents, anyway? Uh, her parents, uh, Scott Clark and Wendy Clark. Oh, yeah. Isn't that your boss? Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> oh, Acadia yeah. Medical yeah. Supply for all your medical needs. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> so, and then the next thing you know, she said, I'd like the Daigle family to come out. Oh, man. So, we went up there, and I don't know. I thought it was a gift or something, the present, the so when we went up there, and the next thing you know, she started talking about how her mother... Her mother tried to, uh, um, the transplant stuff to, you know, give me a transplant, a kidney. She went through the, all the testing, but wow, the last awesome. part of the test, the DNA test, she, uh, it didn't, it wasn't a match. Mm. So she started talking about that and stuff. And then she uh, made a joke about how she says, well, I think her, her my mom was too old. <laughs> 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 and then the next thing you know, she said, yeah, she goes, uh, I, I don't know if it was July or June, but she said that uh, she uh, she went through the process. And then uh, when she told me, uh, she says, uh, so she looked right at me. She says, Mike, I'm a match. Wow. Yeah, so I s- started crying and stuff, <laughs> oh, and the whole family word. did. I mean, it was just a... Uh, I watched the video on Facebook. Yeah, it's, yeah. And it, it, was, it was something else. I mean... Jeez. For me, it was just like, uh, you know, a big uh, burden on my back, just you know, lifted. Yeah, uh, a weight on my, you know, just lifted, and it's like, wow. I mean, it was just I couldn't. I had hard. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you how know, old Marissa. How old she, she was uh, twenty-one. Yeah, really. Yeah. So a twenty-one-year-old yeah, gave tw- you one of her kidneys. Mm. She gave wow. Me. Yeah, she gave it to this old man. <laughs> that's awesome man what a blessing yeah I, uh, yeah it's an awesome that's blessing. caleb's classmate right yeah caleb? yeah i graduated with her how'd yeah. that make you feel i i bawled my eyes out wow yeah and i'm not one to cry but that one that hit me right in the heart and uh i mean just like i had no words either when i found out it's just the thankfulness that i had and just the just I don't even know the joy mm. overjoyed that finally after the long process of going through all this and seeing dad go through all of it and it finally happened right that's awesome wow man I was out of town at the time I was like yes Barb's like what what and I said my got a kidney yeah. I watched the video oh my gosh man that was beautiful yeah, yeah it was it was really it was really <laughs> that's something else that was unreal yeah unreal yeah that's this a blessing leaves you speechless it honestly, does on yeah. so many levels yeah. i mean we're talking you live less than 
seven miles away from each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's your boss's daughter gave her kidney to you. Yeah. I mean, just um, wow. um, imagine the same town. It's, it's, it's what crazy. Are, yeah. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Those are godly odds, right? That's yeah. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Nothing's too, nothing's too big for him. That's for sure. That's amazing. And then also when you guys got to, when you had the operation, um, what did the doctor say about the kidney she gave you? Well, I mean, I went to the, uh, when I had the surgery and the next thing you know, uh, usually they say that what happens is if, when they put the kidney in and stuff and if it doesn't work, then, um, I had a tube in there for my dialysis. He said, if it didn't work, then I'd keep it in there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the next thing you know, uh, the first thing that when I woke up from surgery, I put my hand in there and the next thing I look and it wasn't there. So I'm like, and then he came down and he said, yeah, he said immediately, he said, uh, when we put it in there, it worked right away. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you started peeing right out the, yeah, right out the go. Yeah, he said, uh, I started peeing right away and stuff. And wow. it was just, uh, they were amazed. They were all amazed there. And then when I went up to uh, my room, I mean, it was like, that was Tuesday night. And uh, I had the RN there. Um, the only thing I can tell you is this, is that the the people at the hospital, mm -hmm. uh, they're awesome. Which they, hospital? It was uh, Maine Med, Maine nice. Med Medical in, okay. in Portland, Maine. Oh, wow. I mean, that transplant unit there, the, they're awesome. I mean, nurses and everything, they were just great. I mean, this RN here, he was came in and he's like, oh, I got to empty your bag. And then to come to find out, it's just like he was emptying it almost every hour. And he said, okay, wow. he said, I'll be back. And then when he came back, he had a milk jug. <laughs> 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 he, he said, man, he says, that's how much that was producing. Wow. It, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, they were putting liquid in to go through, but I right. mean, it was just coming right out. Wow. And, and in the morning when he came to me, he goes, listen, he says, I've got to tell you something. He says that. Usually a transplant patient will have a kidney and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday will Thursday will produce as much urine as you're producing on Tuesday. Wow, praise God. He said he said this kidney is amazing. So That's awesome, man. Yeah, so it's I mean everything went good yeah. and stuff and uh yeah the 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 surgeon said if he had if I had a wall uh, put names, says you would be the number one. Cause mm. He said, yeah, it just amazed him how well uh, Mercer's kidney was working in my body. That's awesome. It was just so. It was totally God. God yes. was doing everything. Mm. Yes, for sure. Thank you, Marissa. I know you've heard it many times, but now you're hearing it on yeah. the podcast. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, young lady, for blessing the Daigle family and. The Babbins and everybody. Oh yeah, it was yeah. it was good. Yes, that's awesome, man. That's good stuff. And then your amazing wife Tiffany. Wow, huh? Six and a half years of her taking care of the boys and you. By the way, Mike has four boys. I'm one of them. Yes, Kayla's <laughs> one of them. We got the twins that are 18 years old now, and little Micah. Micah's 13. Yeah, 13. 13. Yeah. yeah. Tiffany was there. She was like the rock, huh? Yeah, she was there. I'm really, uh, yeah. Without her, I don't know if I would have made it because she was, she was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She, what do you want to say to Tiffany right now? She's listening. <laughs> I just want to say, hon, I want to thank you for everything you've done for me. I mean, it was amazing. Even sometimes, you know, when I was not feeling good and gave you a rough time, and I mean, there was a lot of days that I did that and stuff. But for you doing all this stuff and sticking through it, I mean, and doing all this stuff for me and making that page, kidney from Mike and praying and, you know, reading the word and praying to God and mm -hmm. trusting God. And so I just want to say thank you. And yes. I love you very much. Yes. yes. He's got a tear in his eye too, <laughs> Tiffany. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She's, That's great. She was a rock. Yeah. Sure. She climbed sure. Mount Katahdin too. Yeah, yeah. She climbed Mount Katahdin, and she had, she had a shirt uh, made up. So mm -hmm. while she went up to the mountain, uh, she wore and took a picture, and it said, 
Hashtag uh, Daigle Strong. Wow. Yeah, so she she did a lot. Oh, so. that's awesome. That's really awesome. Your mom is amazing, Kayla. She is. She is. Yes. She is best mom out there. That's right. Make sure you tell her all the time. <laughs> well, good stuff. Um, yeah. We're going to be closing. Uh, any advice? We're going to start with you, Mike. Or actually, Mike, we'll start with Caleb. Any advice, advice for children who are going through a situation like that where their parents have kidney disease or any other type of disease? You know, it's... I guess the best advice that I could say is just you have to be there and supportive um, and you have to be you have to be there in the spirit with God as well um, especially for something like this being able to trust and I mean like these last three podcasts that Steve and I have been talking about it's been all about trusting God and everything and this is a situation where um, trusting God was like needed to be the top priority. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so the best advice I could say is no matter what, if you're feeling down about it, if you're in a situation where, you know, you don't believe that something's going to happen, jump back into the word, talk to God and he'll bring you back into that path where he knows that you need to be. And that way you keep your mindset on him and in that situation and make it positive by trusting God, praying it out, and believing for that miracle. Amen. Okay, Dad, what about you, Mike? Well, I mean... As far as... Uh, yeah, advice. Any last well, advice, words? Advice I want to say is this, is that... Uh, I don't want to take too long, but... Listen, wrote, people wrote, need to hear it. I wrote a little bit of stuff down, but yeah. f- before I go with that... Do it. You know, I uh, the advice I have is this, is that... When I was on, uh, you know, going to on dialysis, I went on the online and looked uh, up some stuff to how to make a contraption, how to drink stuff, and how it would heal your kidney. Mm -hmm. And what I was doing to myself is I was looking for man to help me. Wow. You know, from book, from that stuff mm-hmm. and different things for kidney uh, remedies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the only thing I wanted to tell people is uh, I did that stuff. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, so in, so by saying that is the only thing I can say is that you have to trust in God. Mm. Like Proverbs uh, 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and, you know, do not depend on your own understanding, but seek his will yes, in all you right. do, and he will show you which path to take. Amen. You know, it's a, you know God knows best. Mm-hmm. Trust him. Mm. The end. Yes. But, That's right. And the other thing is, I, I was thinking about this, and I said, you know, every single day of our lives, like today, we're, tonight, we're sitting in the chairs. Mm. We're trusting these chairs that somebody made. Yeah, yes. exactly. Hey, that's a good point. He's been listening yeah. to our podcast. That's right. You know what yes. I mean? And we go Preach to the and we go to the grocery stores, and we buy meat, and we trust you know people that you know that wrap this meat and got this meat, and we trust that to eat it. Yeah, you know? <laughs> never thought about that. Yeah, yes. yeah. And we trust insurance companies with insurance for our cars and stuff. Mm-hmm. All this stuff that we trust. Mm. We we trust it like like nothing yeah right? like nothing. nothing you don't yeah. even think yeah. anything of it you're yeah. just like oh I gotta go to the store get some meat and we don't we trust that you know what I mean <laughs> That's true. and then the next thing you know, it's like how can and then th- the thing is is that our own bodies mm. sometimes and our own you know we don't trust but you know what we should trust God because He's the one that made us yes and exactly and it yeah. should be easy mm-hmm. yeah because God you know say hey God I trust you Amen. you made me. So we know who the maker is. Yes. You know, we don't have to worry about, about <laughs> you know. So <laughs> that's what Mike, it is. Mike is French, by the way. So Get all that mud. knocking and banging you hear, and he keeps flailing his arms everywhere while he's talking. He's hitting the table. <laughs> the yeah, I'm French. But yeah, so I mean, it's so when you're having a hard time, you know, with, with your life and your body, or if you're going, you're having different elements in your body, the best person to trust is God because mm-hmm. he made it. Amen. Mm-hmm. So, Amen. Amen. 
Nice, man. Well, it's yeah. good to have you. Hey, thanks. This is good. It's good to be here. Yes. This is a three-way podcast going. We're sitting in the dining room, got the microphones all set up. Um, we're going to go ahead and have you close in prayer, Mike. And remember, you're speaking to people all over the world. There's people in the Philippines and Samoa Islands, too, that are listening to this. Yeah. So that's almost literally on the opposite side. So pray for them as well, you know, anyone out there with kidney disease and stuff yeah. like that. All right, let's do this. Well, Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now, Lord, and we just pray for all these people around the world, Lord, that are going through s similar situations with, you know, kidney disease, or it could be, you know, cancer or any kind of disease, Lord, or sickness. Uh, we just pray right now, Lord, that they would not, you know, trust in, start trusting in, in man or, you know, believing different things, but to trust in God, who is the maker of them he created them and he knows you the best and as we trust in him he will help us through every uh, difficult situations uh, and we pray that you know we know that the enemy would come in and try to divert you know everybody to negativity oh no this won't happen this won't happen but we have to trust god positively mm -hmm. and not waver around here and there, but just to stay straight on the path in trusting God, reading God's word. And we just pray for everybody, Lord, that they would seek you mm -hmm. in different, you know, in difficult times because you do always come through. Mm -hmm. We don't know what, how, you know, the ways that you're going to come through, but we know that you will because you're faithful. So we just pray for everybody here, God, around the world, in every situation that they go through, that you would be with them and touch them, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sweet. There you have it, folks. Mike Daigle, Mike D. Got the kidney doing fantastic. Thank you once again to the Clark family. God bless you, folks. Yes. Yes. Thank you. What a blessing. Well, there you go. We just wrapped up trusting God with an actual testimony. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's good. Yes. You enjoy yourself, Mike? Yeah, I did. Good. Yeah. good. You proud of your dad, Caleb? I am. I am. Yeah. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks. Well, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you share it with somebody who may be going through the same thing that Mike was going through or any other type of health, health issue situation. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to share it. We love the comments that have been coming in about the podcast and previous. And so we look forward to hearing some positive feedback from Mike. We'll make sure we share it with him. We love you all. Take care of yourselves. Peace. Peace.